And we just take it for granted yep, yep. that we have religious freedom in America. But it's slipping away. Yeah. I mean, when you say inclusion, why am I not included and tolerated for right. holding a diverse view? I don't care what other people do in the privacy of their own homes. Mm -hmm. But this consistently being pushed is, is getting ridiculous. Yeah, you know what's going to move the needle? It would be a depression. I'm not rooting for a depression. Mm. But I, I think one of the biggest problems we have is that I had written the book. Mm -hmm. And so he called the HR director and said, since Frank doesn't agree with same-sex marriage, you can't work here. Mm. And so I said, ladies and gentlemen, we have an incredible guest. Uh, I almost feel like he's a friend of the channels, even though this is his first time with the channel, with the amount of times we've reacted to his content and being friendly with his team and just, just an overall brilliant man, uh, public speaker, apologist, I, I don't know, scholar, uh, all these things. He would probably deny these titles, but uh, we have Mr. Frank Turk. Oh, I'll take the titles. You take the titles. <laughs> I'll take them. Why all not? Right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> it doesn't um, matter. <laughs> thank you for being here. My pleasure, man. It's great finally meeting you in the flesh. Been watching yes. your videos quite thank a while. You. Our team loves your videos too, not just oh, me. Man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Jorge is amazing. Yeah. He, Jorge he, he, and, and Heath. Heath is the one that handles all the events. And so mm -hmm. she's been watching you forever. She goes, Oh, oh you're going to be on his show. I was like, Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Jorge, you may not know this, helped me with my Tyrese interview in Atlanta. Oh, which good. Was, would have been awful if he wasn't there uh -huh. so he came through last minute clutch yo he's he's amazing oh gosh, he is incredible. he stays up on all this tech stuff yes like he's he's right up to date and he yes. loves that stuff yeah. he's great so shout out to you jorge thank you um frank i want to talk about so many different things with you um that you've had a couple of viral moments where you've been confronted i mm -hmm. want to get into those um you obviously have a an, an amazing speaking uh thing you do on YouTube that gets clipped up and social media and the way you guys use all of it is, is brilliant. But I don't think a lot of people know your story mm. and how you even got into doing this, which goes back about a decade. And you actually came up in, in like a corporate America type of setting, correct? Yeah, actually, I was brought up in New Jersey. So I was Catholic because it's the law. Right? If you're from <laughs> New Jersey, <laughs> That's you're either Catholic, Jewish, or uh or a skeptic. Uh -huh. And so I went to Catholic high school and I always believed in God. I okay. always knew there had to be a first cause. That okay. just seemed obvious seemed to me. Obvious, Somebody yeah. created this whole thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but I never really knew who Jesus was. And it wasn't until after I got out of college and I went right into the Navy. I was a Naval ROTC student, went to navigator school in Pens Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. And I met the son of a Methodist minister. Mm -hmm. And I had so many questions for this guy. He finally said, look, you just need to get Josh McDowell books. Mm. Evidence demands a ver verdict and more than a carpenter. Right there. There's, there it is right there. <laughs> In fact, that version right, right there, there, I helped update. Yeah, that's the on, OG one. On the, uh, yeah, on the on the team that uh, Norman Geiser put together. That's the one that uh, brought me to faith. That one? Yep. Oh, cool. That, that exact uh, version of it. Yeah. I was a sophomore in high school. dating. I was dating a Christian girl, stopped dating her, started dating a Jehovah's Witness girl. Mm -hmm. Is Jesus God? Is he not God? And my coworkers at Pizza Hut, were Christians uh -huh. and they gave me that book and then I've since got, gotten a new one and that kind of sealed the deal for me and like fully surrendered. So my that's why it's Jesus. always behind you. Yes. Okay. And yes. you just had Sean on. I did have to, which was surreal because he yeah. didn't know that. So when I shared it with him, oh, he, was, yeah? he was flipping out. Yeah. So it was amazing. Yeah. Well, that book uh -huh. brought me and the other one was more than a carpenter, mm -hmm. those yep. two books. Yep. And so that was say 1985. Mm -hmm. And then when I got out of the Navy in 1992, I actually met Norman Geisler in a course I was taking at McLean Bible Church in D.C. because okay. we were stationed in D.C. And he was starting a seminary in Charlotte, North Carolina, Southern Evangelical Seminary. Mm -hmm. Within six months, my wife and I and our three sons moved to Charlotte to go to the seminary because there was no online back then. Okay. And uh, we've been there ever since. We've been in Charlotte ever since. And so in 2006, after I got a doctorate in apologetics in 2005, we started uh, crossexamine.org, mm -hmm. mostly to go to colleges, high schools, and churches to show that Christianity is true, because Norm and I wrote the book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, in 2004. Mm -hmm. And so from that point on, uh, I began going to colleges, high schools, and churches. But in the meantime, from 1993 to 2011, I was doing corporate training okay. for corporations, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. So, so how, let, let's back up. How do you, as an apologist, you're you're working? You said you helped update that version yeah. of Josh McDowell's book. You, you're doing apologetics work. It sounds like right and seminary. How do you then get into corporate training, and what are you training these corporations? Well, in order to uh, pay 
get money to pay the family, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, provide for the family. Uh -huh. I couldn't just go to seminary because okay. we had, I had a wife and three kids. Sure. So I had to figure out a way to make money while I'm going to seminary uh, and while I'm starting up the, I don't uh, the uh, cross examined ministry. Mm -hmm. So in the Navy, I was an instructor, and when I got out of the Navy, I had some skills to instruct people, mm -hmm. and I just began studying leadership, management, sales, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. customer service. Mm -hmm. And so I began after about three years of trying. There was a lean three years mm -hmm. when we're going to seminary and we didn't have two nickels to rub together, mm -hmm. but I was doing corporate training. After about three years, it started to take off. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing training for companies like Cisco, Bank of America, a lot of insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And I kept doing that and I enjoyed it. It, it. it was fun. But I then wrote a book called Correct, Not Politically Correct. Mm -hmm. It had to do with same-sex marriage. And mm -hmm. somebody in Cisco discovered I had written the book mm. and they fired me that day. Mm. In the name of inclusion, tolerance, and diversity, mm. I was excluded and not tolerated for holding a diverse view. Interesting. What year was this? This was 2011. 2011. Okay, so, so this is right as things are kind of starting to, sh I feel like around that time, pe people were starting to shift. Things are getting more intense with this Right, but, but same-sex marriage was not uh, the case. Oh, uh, oh, I always forget the name of the case. Hodges versus o Obergefell. Something like, the, yeah, the case yeah. that mandated same-sex yes. marriage on every like state. 20, 2015. That right? was 2015. Later, yeah. So this is four years before that. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, three years after California shoots it down in 2008. Yes. Crazy. California, mm -hmm. not to derail, California votes against... Same-sex marriage. In 2008 mm -hmm. and votes for allowing teens and people under 18 to terminate babies without parental consent. That's how screwed up the state was at the time. Yes. Like, yeah, the you know, the, the LGTV people, no, but let 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 babies kill babies. Mm -hmm. Like insane. Insane. I remember looking at that, like, oh, both of these are gonna get struck down. Nope. One one passed, one didn't pass. Crazy. I, I don't really blame the people on the other side of this issue. I blame the church because the church has not been salt and light. Mm. The church has been has been asleep at the switch, so to speak. Okay. The church has been more concerned about uh, living your best life now mm. than loving their neighbor and ensuring that they are salt and light. Yeah. And the way we love our neighbor from a political perspective is to put laws in place that protect innocent people from evil. If we don't do that, who's going to do that? Yeah, yeah, that's and, good. And so the, the church is really at fault for that. Yeah, I, we, we actually just talked, my pastor just talked about that yesterday. We were mm -hmm. talking about uh, Romans 13 and yeah. the laws of the land and understanding their context versus our context. So I want to, I absolutely want to come back to that. Mm -hmm. But so you write the first edition mm -hmm. of this book mm -hmm. and as you're doing your business and they find out about the first edition of this book and then what, what happens? Well, that book initially came out in 2008, and somebody who was in a leadership class who I, who identified as L, what do you call it? I, <laughs> we call it LGTV. LGTV. They identified we, as LGTV, mm -hmm. Googled my name and discovered I had written the book, mm -hmm. and so he called the HR director and said, well, since Frank doesn't agree with same-sex marriage, again, this is even before the decision that mm -hmm. mandated it on the states. Mm -hmm. Since Frank doesn't agree with same-sex marriage, he can't work here. Mm. And so I said, uh, or they called me and said, you know, you can't work here anymore. Mm. And so I then wrote the CEO of Cisco at the time. His name was John Chambers. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, John Chambers was on the elect McCain commission in California. Mm -hmm. That was the election between Barack Obama mm -hmm. and, and John McCain. And I was a Navy veteran. Of course, John McCain was a Navy veteran. So I wrote John Chambers and I said, I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. I've been working at your company for several years doing corporate training. Mm -hmm. And I was fired because I don't agree with same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. And the candidate that you supported in the last election didn't agree with same-sex marriage either. Mm -hmm. Are you qualified to be working at Cisco? Mm. The next day I get a call from an attorney mm -hmm. who says, what do you want? And mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't want anything other than you call the dogs off of the Christmas. One billion dollars. That's right. mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, since I was a vendor, I really didn't have a, I wasn't like an employee uh -huh. that could bring some sort of civil rights yeah. case. You were a contractor. I was a like, contractor. Yeah, yeah. So they could, you know, they, you know, I don't like the color of your shirt. You're fired, you know. So, but I just wanted to point out the inconsistency of sure. it. Sure. And so they set me up with a lady at the company 
who was the head of inclusion, tolerance, and diversity. So they I were kept trying a- to re-educate yeah, you. Yeah, I kept asking her <laughs> questions like. What do you mean by inclusion? And what do you mean by diversity? Oh, and what do you mean by tolerance? This is because, what they're doing to Jordan Peterson right now. Oh, they, they tried to do this to you in 2000. Oh, you, you know, like you heard about the whole. Sure. Yeah. 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 So this is the same. This exact is 2011. Thing. That's crazy. Yeah. So I, I kept asking her questions that yeah. she couldn't answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you say inclusion, why am I not included and tolerated for right. holding a diverse view? If right. you're all about inclusion, tolerance, and diversity. Right. Because inclusion, tolerance, and diversity doesn't mean what we think it means. Mm-hmm. By the plain language, it mm-hmm. means if you don't agree with us, mm-hmm. we're going to hurt you. Mm-hmm. So the conversation did not go well. Mm. So my friend Mike Adams, who was a columnist at the time, and I said, you know, we got to go public with mm-hmm. this. We just can't let this go. So mm-hmm. we began writing columns. He wrote a column called The Cisco Kid. Mm-hmm. And I wrote a column called Sex at Work. Mm-hmm. By the way, don't Google that. Don't Google <laughs> Sex at Work. It'll take you right to Harvey Weinstein's website. Anyway, um, so <laughs> it's actually at, at our website, crossexamine.org. And it's in the book, the mm-hmm. book that you just held up because I put the column in the book. Mm-hmm. But my question was this, Ruslan, like, why is corporate America obsessed mm-hmm. with talking about sex at work? Are we supposed to have sex at work? Mm-hmm. I mean, really, why, why is that? Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as we treat one another with respect That's in it. the workplace, regardless of what we do sexually, That's it. there should be no problem. Mm-hmm. Why, why are you trying to force me to accept a sexual practice that I don't think is right? Right, right. What is, what are we, why are we talking about this at I ju- work? I just put out a song, and mm-hmm. one of the lines in the song said, and if you don't agree with it, mm-hmm. they'll call it a phobia. Yeah, that's right. So it's like if you if you don't affirm, mm-hmm. if you don't agree, not now you 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 have a phobia and a fear of something, mm-hmm. which to me is, is is the weaponizing of language. Mm-hmm. Because my, my wife has a real phobia of animals. Mm-hmm. We don't know why she didn't get bit as a kid, but if there's a dog off a leash, she freaks out. She makes me a human shield, mm-hmm. and and she, I've seen. I'm not joking, Frank. Yeah. I've seen her jump on couches. I've seen her jump on chairs. Really? I've seen her jump on cars. I've seen her jump on dining room tables. Oh. I've. That's a phobia. Yeah. That's a real mm-hmm. paranoia and fear of something. Mm-hmm. So I think the weaponization of language to say now you're phobic, for, mm-hmm. and now we have fat phobic. We sure. have all these different phobias, and it's like no, no, no. I just don't want to be fat. I'm not afraid of fat mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. I love fat people. I got fat people in my life. I just don't want to be fat, right? And so it's it's the same thing with with, with this other stuff. Is like I, I was talking to a buddy, and this this was heartbreaking. And he we were talking about this conversation, and and he we were talking about uh, Lecrae's video reacting to Lil Nas X, and Lecrae. Lil Nas X is like was trolling, making a Christian song, mm-hmm. and Lecrae was kind of like defending him because the church was quote quote unquote homophobic, mm. and and me and Lecrae had a private conversation about this, and so I was having a conversation with my buddy, and I said, man, the the, the use of language and and the weaponization of empathy mm-hmm. is is a mess because like this isn't the church's fault that Lil Nas X wants to troll the church and be a gay Christian artist and talk about he wants to be on his knees for prayer and for other things, right? That, that's not the church's fault. And that's kind of like Lecrae's video was about it. I didn't react to it, but I pri- privately talked to him. And my buddy was like, well, you don't think the church is homophobic? And I was like, I'm sure there are Christians out there that are homophobic, but what do you mean by What do you mean homophobic? by homophobic? And he yeah. said, oh, I just found out that my family, uh, one of our acquaintances came out to us and I'm afraid of having her and her girlfriend around us, and I don't know, like, and I said, that's not, like, you saying, you you saying, hey, when you come around my kids, like, can you not French kiss? Is not homophobia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No one gets to French kiss around my kids. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not, yeah. not like, my mm-hmm. niece and her boyfriend, not, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not, not none of my married friends. So that's, and if there's really relationship there, and there's really equity and inclusion, they should have enough dignity and respect for you to say, if you have a Christian sex ethic, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to flaunt that. Now, yeah. in our context, we've had gay couples over for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Never mm-hmm. had an issue. They've mm-hmm. never did the PDA thing because most people don't want to rub their sexuality in their That's face right. or yeah. in your kid's face. But for whatever reason, and so I literally had to kind of correct, almost rebuke my buddy. I'm like, bro, you're not homophobic. You are just concerned of what your little kids are going to be exposed to. And I think there should be tolerance and acceptance on the other side ex- extended as well. Yeah, why is it that the Christian always need to, needs to change what they think is right? That's right. But the other, the people that don't agree with Christians, they don't have to change at all. That's right. Why is That's that? That's right. And, 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 you, and not only that, but they get to flaunt it and mm-hmm. you have to accept it and you have to celebrate mm-hmm. it. It makes no sense. Well, it, it's, it's also interesting that you bring up the weaponization of our compassion because mm-hmm. that's really what goes on. 
they say that if you're loving, you have to agree with everything we do, but mm -hmm. that's not love. Mm -hmm. I mean, every parent knows you don't agree with everything your 13 year old wants to do. That's sure. not loving. That's enablement. Sure. You need to stand in the way of evil if you're going to love people. Mm -hmm. But we think to, uh, love means approval. It does not mean approval. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had a debate, Michael Brown and I, many years ago with some LG TV activists. Yeah, yeah. It was, I saw it. It Did was you? brilliant. Yeah. It was great. You guys, by the way, you two had an amazing synergy together in that debate. I'd never seen it. It was like you guys were finishing each other's sentences. It was, it was Michael amazing. Brown has forgotten more than I'll ever know. He's yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, at one point the debate was, does the title of it was something like, does love require affirmation? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, at one point we turned to the other side and we said, uh, do you love us? And they said, yes. And we said, do you affirm our position? And they said, no. I said, you just lost the debate then. The debate's over. Yeah, because... They were frazzled, by the way. Yeah. They were, they were, they were, they were frustrated. <laughs> you, could, you can love people and not agree with them. Right. In fact, most of the time, you don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. And every married couple knows this. You don't agree on everything, but sure. you still love the other person. Yes. And so the idea that you have to love people or you have to affirm everything they do to love them is just... It's, it's really from the pit of hell, if mm -hmm. you think about it. Mm -hmm. Because love means seeking what's best for the other person. And if you know what somebody else is doing isn't what's best for them, mm -hmm. you have an obligation to try and talk them out of it. Yeah. That's what love is. In fact, you know, in the passage that everybody reads at their wedding, but nobody obeys, 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. 13, mm -hmm. Paul says, love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. Love rejoices in the truth. Mm -hmm. Love always protects. Love always perseveres. In order to protect people, you have to oppose any evil they want to do. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. In order to protect people, you have to oppose any evil they want to do. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, they may not know that the evil they want to do is causing self-imposed harm. Sure, they don't know. Yeah. Right? When my That's mother right. was an alcoholic, she just got sober after the pandemic, which has been amazing. Mm. She didn't understand that she was hurting herself, that her alcoholism was hurting herself. And I, I could never affirm which mm. caused a lot of tension. And we were basically estranged at one point in terms of just not communicating. Mm. And then I helped her turn it around by the grace of God. And so she's been sober for about three years now. Which is How did really you good. break that to her? Like, what did you say to her? I would just tell her that you're, you're nuts. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> like, what do you like? Like, before you come over, make uh -huh. sure you're sober. Like, don't uh -huh. come over here tipsy. Don't, uh -huh. don't call me tipsy. Don't call me drunk. Uh -huh. I'm, if I hear, if I hear, I could, I could tell with my, I could hear it in her voice. Yeah. I just would not talk to her. I would not communicate with her. And the long story short, and sometimes this is how God works in people's lives, not all the time. My mom let herself go to the point where she needed both hips replaced. Mm. And because she needed both hips replaced, she fell and broke her shoulder, like like swollen shoulder, maybe three weeks before the pandemic, before everything shut down. So this is the beginning of March. And because she needed help, she called me and uh, and I saw the shoulder, took her to the emergency room. They, they started working on that. So she got surgery on her shoulder and she got both hips fixed. And then at that point, um, she just didn't really need, have a need to, to drink. Mm, it was like mm. breaking the shoulder and going to the hospital for so long, for a week or whatever she was in there, broke the the. It was like an physical. impact event for her. She mm. went, man. Well, it also got the alcohol yeah. out of her system. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So it was like the, the, the impact event, then the alcohol out of her system. And then it was like, okay, now you're functional. You can come around the kids. You have something mm -hmm. to live for. And she, she hasn't, she hasn't drank since. And you she know, quit smoking cigarettes too. She, she vapes now, but, but, but both. And those were massive strongholds for her. Yeah. You know, one of the things I think we can do with people, because it is sensitive, especially with family. Mm -hmm. How do you bring this stuff up? Sure. Whether it's sexual issues, alcohol, drugs, sure. whatever it is, sure. pornography. Mm -hmm. it, it, it might be a good tactic to say to somebody, hey, if I were going down a road you knew was harmful to me and mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. Would you love me enough to tell me? Mm. What's the other person going to say? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, thank you. Can I do that for you right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think the road you're going down is going to be harmful. That's and good. the reason I'm telling you this is because I love you. Mm. I, I, I couldn't hate you more yeah. by remaining silent. And I don't want to remain silent. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's, that's yeah. a great question. Mm -hmm. If I were going down a road that was harmful, would you... Would, would you, you love me enough to would tell you love me? me enough to tell me? That's yeah. that's a great way to engage in that mm -hmm. in that conversation. Um, so they say, what do you want, the Cisco uh, CEO oh, yeah, or the, the legal? Them. Yeah, yeah. What do you want? So I would have asked for <laughs> a, an, an obnoxious amount of money. No, no, no. I, to be I, quiet. That wasn't the point. <laughs> that was, the, the point was I said just call the dogs off other Christians because ah. you claim to be inclusive, talent, and diverse, and you're not. Yes. Well, we went public with all this. I wrote. A, a, a column and Mike Adams wrote a couple. Mm -hmm. Turns out that the the lady 
who fired me was fired shortly thereafter. I don't know if it was because she fired sure. me, but by making the CEO look bad mm -hmm. in public, mm. that that was a no no. Mm. So I, I don't take any 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 gratification in that. Yeah. I'm I'm simply saying that's what happened yeah. after we went public. What, and what then, was what was her title? Because because this is early the diverse the diversity inclusion. I, I don't know what her exact title really was, but yet. that was the essence of what she was trying to do: okay. advance inclusion, tolerance, sure. and diversity. And when I asked her to define that, she couldn't. Yep. Yeah. I started asking her questions, you know, why am I being excluded mm -hmm. for holding a diverse view? Mm -hmm. She just couldn't quite <laughs> get there. And then Bank of America fired me right after that because they heard of this event. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, the positive side of this is I had to go full time with cross examine because I burned the bridges that I had to the corporate world mm -hmm. by going public. So that's when I began doing this full time, which I'm doing now for what? 13 years. Can we can we pause there mm -hmm. for a, a moment? Because I think with those of our audience that is aspiring to maybe build a nonprofit, build a mm -hmm. business, build, mm -hmm. build a YouTube, build a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you were in a position where you where you had this this corporate world that you built up of one business as, as a contractor. Mm -hmm. So you're doing these trainings. But then on the side, it sounds like you're really building up your baby and the thing you're really, really, really passionate mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And God almost f sounds like he kind of forced you into going the other direction. Should look at it that way. Sure, right? it was providential. Yeah, Pro providential yeah. indeed. And if if like how how long did that take to go from okay, I have my my day job, I have to work to eat, mm -hmm. but on the, on the side, I'm sowing to reap. I'm sowing to reap for the next season right. of this apologetics ministry taking off. And obviously, you know, a decade removed now, plus mm -hmm. decade plus removed, and you guys are you guys are crushing it. Right, you're on multiple platforms. I think multiple languages. Right, you guys are doing an amazing job. Um, how how was that process to 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 transition? Especially, you are you have a family, you sure, have kids, yeah. you have people who are dependent mm -hmm. on you, and and for the entrepreneurs or the people that are aspiring to kind of build audiences and build ministries, what what what, what insights would you have for them? I'd say be patient. It mm -hmm. takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, my mentor, Dr. Norman Geiser, always used to say, get your education first, then do your ministry. So mm. for me, you know, everyone wants to jump into ministry right away. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you had Sean McDowell Dow here a few mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. I remember asking Sean, he went to a leadership conference in Florida a number of years ago. I said, Sean, what was the the top insight you took away from this leadership concept, mm -hmm. uh, uh, conference you went to? And he said, shun the spotlight as long as you can. That's good. And you thought, that seems counterintuitive, but no, he's right. Mm -hmm. Why shun the spotlight? Mm -hmm. Because in today's digital world, everything you do is recorded, mm -hmm. and you don't want to, if you're a true Christian, you don't want to say anything that's going to bring disrepute on mm -hmm. Christianity or Jesus when you're too young and you don't know any better. That's good. Get educated and then get in the spotlight. That's good. So I thought that was insightful. And by the time I went full-time with Cross-Examined, I had been studying apologetics for 18 years. Mm. And uh, so we really didn't start doing the live streaming stuff uh, until it became cost effective mm -hmm. to do maybe over the past five or six years. Mm -hmm. So now the world's a little bit different. When I started, in order to get credibility in this world, you had to write a book. Mm -hmm. Now you can, as you've done, create mm -hmm. a YouTube environment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can get credibility that way. Mm -hmm. So there's really two ways to do it. Mm -hmm. But for every for every one of you mm -hmm. or me that's out there doing this and has you know half a million followers or whatever, mm -hmm. there's thousands that have two three hundred followers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's no guarantee you're going to get there. Yeah, just be patient mm -hmm. and keep doing it every day, every day. And I think there's value in doing that. If you if, if it happens too quickly, that's not good for your soul. Yeah, it's just not. That's good. That's good. You know, I, the interesting thing about my journey is that I had been walking with Jesus, reading apologetics books, plugged into a local church, on staff at a church, communicating mm. for almost 20 years before I really started talking about my faith and my opinions about my faith and my opinions about culture online. Mm. My YouTube channel prior to 2020 was just me having conversations with my friends. Sometimes we talk about faith, sometimes we wouldn't. It was about music stuff, it was about marketing ideas, it was about different things like do do documenting vlogging. And then the pandemic happened and I pivoted and that's really what talk, like people don't know that I was on YouTube from 2015 to 2020 mm. with less than 15,000 subscribers, you know, 5,000 subscribers in 28. And so I think what you're saying is spot on in terms of don't, don't go after the spotlight because that could actually ruin you prematurely. Yes. And 
don't be afraid to work a job. That's right. To, to again, mm -hmm. work to eat while you're sowing to reap for mm -hmm. the next season. How long was that process for you as now you're ending corporate America, right? You, all these doors are closed providentially before cross-examine finally is able to replace that from an income standpoint. Well, it was you. a parallel. Uh, cross-examine, we began in 2006, 2007. By mm -hmm. the time 2011 rolled around, we had enough donors to where I could go f full time. Okay. Okay, and then it's, sup it's supplemented by going to a church when a you know, church gives you an honorarium. Sure. So it's not all from cross-examine. Sure. So it was, f say, five, four or five years uh, that I'm doing this parallel track, yes. that I'm, I'm working. Well, let me back up. I mean, when we m moved to Charlotte to go to seminary in mm -hmm. 1993, I'm starting up this speaking business, and I'm going to seminary at the same time, and I'm also working with Dr. Geisler, doing some presentations with him, wrote a book with him in, in uh, 1998 called Legislating Morality, because all, the, all laws legislate morality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're traveling the country doing a program called The 12 Points That Show Christianity's True. Mm -hmm. And at one point I turned to him, I said, hey, Norm, this needs to be a book. He said, okay, let's write it. Mm -hmm. So that turned into I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Mm -hmm. And that was done by 2004. I'm still going to seminary. I'm still doing corporate training. Mm -hmm. And then... By 2006 or seven, we started crossexamine.org, but that's still a side gig. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing corporate training all the way to 2011, and by that time, we had enough donors and enough backing mm -hmm. in order for me to say, okay, we're burning the bridges in the corporate world. Let's just go full-time this. Now, I actually think it's, it's, it's good for your soul, good for your growth to do something other than ministry. I'm not saying everybody has to do this, but for me... It was good to be in the military for eight mm -hmm. years. It was good to be in the business world for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just in ministry all the time, I think for some people anyway, you can get myopic. You, mm -hmm. you, you don't really know what the real world mm -hmm. is doing mm -hmm. and what it's like to work in corporate America, what mm -hmm. it's like to work or be in the military, what it's like to do other things other than straight ministry. So mm -hmm. for me, it was helpful for me to do those other things. Yeah, being bivocational yes. kind of gave you yeah. an edge. Yeah. Do you think that... When you built both things up and they're doing well, do you think that those ships getting burnt <laughs> where you now you had to go full throttle? Yeah, you had to. You think yeah. that that by also the way, lit a fire under you? Yeah. By the way, I was paid a lot more in the corporate world than I am now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, which is which is which yeah. is common. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So so then tell me that transition into full time full time ministry. Well, we just decided that I would start doing cross-examine full-time, which meant I would be on the road a lot more doing universities, doing churches, mm -hmm. doing uh, conferences for kids, you know, for youth, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that transition, I was already doing some of that mm -hmm. while I was working in the corporate world. So it wasn't a really big transition. I just amped that side up mm -hmm. and uh, and said, look, I, I've got more on my calendar now, more time to do this yeah. cross-examine uh, ministry. That's beautiful. Um, so let's go back to to mm -hmm. when um, you been fired from Bank of America. Cisco mm -hmm. has already fired you. They ask you, "What do you want?" The story is starting to go viral. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing about the story mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. I remember starting to hear about some of this. Like, oh man, like you guys are trying to be more inclusive, but like this has a negative impact. Sure. And I remember hearing about your mm -hmm. story. So what happens next? After oh, at Cisco. Mm -hmm. Well, just in terms of. How the entire thing kind of plays out? Does it was there an apology issued to you? Did uh, you just kind of like quietly? Yeah, not really an apology from Cisco. Bank of America had a conversation with uh, the head of HR, and she gave me the old wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, this isn't totally consistent, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was again just trying to say, call the dogs off other Christians. Why? Why are you making this an issue? Mm. Why are you making political and moral views? a requirement to work at your company, yeah. uh, that's a violation of people's rights. That's right. As long as they treat one another with respect that's right. in the workplace and get the job done, you shouldn't care what they think about sex. Yes. You shouldn't care what they think about religion. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't care what they think about these matters that are just germane to them mm -hmm. in, in their own personal life. Mm. So it, it, it's it's flipped so far to the other side now that the people who are the most intolerant are the ones who say they're fighting fighting for tolerance. You mm -hmm. notice that? Mm -hmm. They're not they're not tolerant at all. So she gives you the wink wink and I, I think these inconsistencies obviously mm -hmm. have, have amplified, sure. right? Over, oh, yeah. over over the years. 
And now, I think that most people would say, yeah, this has gone too far. Mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of people are at. Now, again, I've been looking at polling data. I'm not sure if you saw this study. I, I could pull it up, but it's a study that basically said that in the last year, um, Americans have actually become more conservative, morally speaking, mm. right? So I had uh, Tim from the New Evangelicals on, and, and he and I showed him this, this study, and it was like, you know, more people think that uh, sex before marriage is, is morally wrong. More people think all these things are, are more morally wrong than they did a year ago. Hmm. And it seems like there's a shift happening in terms of the zeitgeist. Would, would you agree? The pendulum may be swinging the other way. I mm -hmm. think it's swinging the other way on the trans issue. Okay. I think people are going, yeah, this is crazy. We shouldn't be mutilating children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we shouldn't be doing this. And that's why 23 states have passed laws against it. Right. So... Now, on the other hand, here we are in California. California wants to be a haven for people that want to mutilate their children. That's They'll right. even pay to bring them in That's or right. to abort their children up to the moment of birth. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is madness. But whose fault is it? It's not Gavin Newsom's fault. Mm -hmm. It's the church's fault. Yeah. The yeah. church The church hasn't been the church. Yeah. In fact, maybe we can talk about this for a minute. I think the biggest problem the church has practically mm -hmm. is too much prosperity. And what I mean by that is, I, look, I don't want people not to be prosperous. I'm simply saying a bigger test is not suffering. A bigger test is prosperity. Mm. Because when you get too prosperous, you start forgetting about God. I don't need mm. God. I can do my own thing. And look, when I, I love California. I, I used to live in California when I was in the Navy. Um, it's the, I think it's the most beautiful state in the country. It, it, it's got everything. I agree. It, it, yeah, yeah. It's got everything, right? <laughs> yeah. You got beaches, you got mountains, you got redwoods, you got lakes, you got uh, just dyna amazing uh, sights and the weather. You know, I mean, it's just who, who would not want to uh, live here if you could? Mm -hmm. God makes a beautiful place. What do human beings do? Mm -hmm. We mess it up mm -hmm. by rejecting the truce that God has provided for us. And mm -hmm. we try and create our own utopia, mm. not realizing that human beings are flawed, human beings are uh, have a sin nature. And that's why I think places like this eventually get to a point where people go, man, enough is enough. This yep. is crazy. We're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to change reality mm -hmm. to fit our preferences mm -hmm. when in fact we should be changing our preferences to fit reality. It's good. You know, the interesting thing about California that a lot of people don't know, and I'm sure you know this, mm -hmm. but when you when you pull out San Francisco and Los Angeles, mm -hmm. California's if we're talking politics, yeah. is, is like the rest of the country. Yes. Right? There's yeah. even a, a, a meme that I've seen where it it shows um, the Southern California, and it has, like, all the cities, and then, like, Newport Beach, like, it, it scratches out Newport Beach and it just writes Florida. <laughs> right, because yeah, uh, if you go, if you go to Orange County, uh -huh. you go to obviously San Diego County, mm -hmm. you go to um, uh, Bakersfield, you go oh, to sure. all these other counties. It's way more conservative. It's just oh, L.A. Yeah. and San oh, Francisco yeah. completely, you know, sway it the other way with in terms of the just the sheer volume of population. That, that farmland there. from say Bakersfield all the way north of Sacramento, mm -hmm. other than Sacramento itself. All conservative. Yeah. 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 It's all and, red. But I, I I am hopeful, Frank, in that I think here at least, I think LA and San Francisco are waking up that like the the the, the ideology that drives the policies just doesn't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't well, make sense and it's not adding up and it's mm -hmm. doing more even Governor Newsom surprisingly made more of a moderate position on the latest Transformers bill that they tried to pass mm -hmm. where you can where parents like lost the right to engage and he ended up shooting it down which was like a big like whoa and so everybody's like he's signaling that he's for, a moderate running for president yeah, 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 and all yeah, yeah. this yeah but that was shocking like that that that, that happened mm -hmm. now again i still think he's a lunatic um, well i agree yeah I'm, i don't want to take any all responsibility from him i'm sure. saying gavin newsom wouldn't even be the governor of christians uh were engaged like they should be yeah yeah uh, and, and people say oh i don't get involved in politics i just preach the gospel and i tell them if you think the gospel is important as we all do, mm -hmm. and you don't think politics are important, mm -hmm. you're missing something really big. Yep. And that is politics affects your ability to preach and live the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't think so, go to some of the countries I've been. I've been mm -hmm. to Iran. I've been to Saudi Arabia. I've been to mm -hmm. China. Mm -hmm. Can we do this podcast in those 
right. those places? Right. No. That's right. Can can we have the First Baptist Church of Tehran mm -hmm. there, or the First Baptist Church Church of Riyadh or mm -hmm. Mecca? No. Why? Because politically they've ruled it out. That's right. And we just take it for granted yep. Yep. that we have religious freedom in America. Yeah. But it's slipping away. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because the church isn't engaged. Mm. And my my very ability to make a living because I'm a Christian was hampered by politics. Mm. And so we have to be engaged yeah. if for no other reason to protect religious freedom and also because we love our neighbor. Yeah. And we want laws put in place that protect people, even laws they may not like, mm. we want them put in place. Yeah. And it's not a theocracy. People always say, oh, it's a theocracy. No, no, no. No, <laughs> Christian, we live in Christian a, nationalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We live in America. Everybody has the right, and I would argue, the obligation to make yourself informed about the issues and then vote accordingly. That's right. It's not imposing a religious... We're not imposing religion. We are imposing morality, but everybody's trying to do That's that. Right. That's right. Everybody's trying to impose a moral position. Yep. Even if you're pro-abortion, you're trying to impose a moral position. Yeah. Why? What are you saying? You're saying a woman has a moral right... Right. to basically kill her child. That's right. The only question is, is that the right moral right? Yeah. Yeah. And the answer is no, because yeah. you're killing another human being. Right. So everybody's trying to impose a moral position. The only question is whose moral position? Whose moral position? And I don't want to impose my moral position. I don't want to impose your moral position. I want to impose the moral position. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, because the interesting thing about opposing moral positions is mm -hmm. now they are seemingly acknowledging that they are objective as well. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. if you if you take the unborn situation, mm -hmm. they would say no, it's it's objectively wrong to impede on a woman's right. That's an objective That's statement right. that yeah. that alludes to an objective yeah. truth. Yeah. Hey, it's morally wrong to uh, not affirm these people mm -hmm. have a right to be happy and all mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so. So the the I appreciate that at least they are acknowledging that there is an objective moral standard. And then we just have to do the backwards work of saying, okay, well, what is the objective moral standard? And in my opinion, and I'm sure your your book explores this mm -hmm. as well, the data is on our side. Oh, of course. The yeah. data is on our side yeah. in terms of, hey, make the decision to terminate a baby and then see the consequences of it. Even if we were to take Han's view of ethics and, and remove God from it and go to the moral imperative, if everyone did said thing, mm -hmm. what would happen? Mm -hmm. If everyone... You know, right now, what is it? Uh, uh, Gen Zers, uh, one out of five are identifying as a part of the LGBTQ community. Right, right, right. So, if one out of five identify, and then that number keeps increasing, it's doubled every generation. What is the logical conclusion of that? <laughs> That's Bill Maher said. The Bill Maher said. By 2060, we'll all be gay. <laughs> well, well, and then what happens to the basic ability to recreate and mm -hmm. maintain our population or mm -hmm. exceed our population, which we see what happens when there's not a growing population. Mm -hmm. Look at China. Look, mm -hmm. at, look, at, look at Korea, right? Sure. They can't support their own infrastructure, right? So even if we just think about it logically, this stuff doesn't make sense. Well, that's why in the book, Correct Not Politically Correct, I ask people to consider just two questions, and here are the two questions. What would happen to society if everyone lived faithfully in natural marriage, mm -hmm. marriage between a man and a woman? Mm -hmm. Well, just think about it. Child abuse would go down. Mm -hmm. Obviously, divorce would go down. Uh, you'd have uh, more families together. So you'd have uh, parents in the home, mm -hmm. you know, dads in the home, which mm -hmm. is huge. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'd have lower taxes because the government wouldn't need to bloat itself to That's try right. and take to try and make up for the broken family. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'd have so many things that would be better in society. Next question. What would happen if everyone lived faithfully in same-sex marriage? Mm. It would be the end of civilization in a generation or two. That's right. Now, I'm not suggesting that having a law that allows same-sex marriage would cause this. Mm -hmm. I'm simply pointing out that there is a difference between the two relationships, a qualitative difference. Mm -hmm. One perpetuates and stabilizes society, mm -hmm. and the other doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so when you treat things equally, you're saying they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. These two relationships are not equal. Mm -hmm. They're different qualitatively mm -hmm. because one perpetuates and stabilizes society and the other does not. Mm -hmm. Now, the people involved in those relationships are equal, mm -hmm. but their behaviors are not. Mm -hmm. And so people need to make these distinctions in order to say, I'm not saying that people who have a same-sex orientation mm -hmm. aren't human beings that deserve respect. I'm saying they do. Mm -hmm. I'm simply saying that the behavior in which they engage is not the same as the behavior of a heterosexual mm -hmm. couple. Mm -hmm. And they're qualitatively different. Mm -hmm. You could also ask the question, why is the state involved in marriage at all? Mm. Yeah. 
And the reason the state is involved in marriage is to perpetuate and stabilize society. Mm. The state doesn't care whether you love the other person. I mean, when you got married, did did you go did you go to a a, a, a the government and for a marriage license? Did they ask you, do you really love her? Mm. Do you really love right, him? Right, they, they don't. Right, that's right. not the issue. That's not yeah. right. The issue is. Are you going to come together and perpetuate and stabilize society? Yep. Or at least model that. Even if you're a sterile couple, you're modeling that to uh, the rest of society that when a man and woman come together, mm -hmm. they are generally procreating and they're generally perpetuating and stabilizing society yeah. where yeah. two men and two women doing that don't do that. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem with same-sex marriage is it's basically made the institution of marriage genderless. Mm. And if the institution of marriage is genderless then marriage has nothing to do with children. And if marriage has nothing to do with children, what institution in our society takes care of children? Yep. Yep. There isn't one. Yeah. It's got to be marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's so interesting that like when, when we, when we have these linear conversations, mm -hmm. it, it all clicks, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, it, it, it almost seems like there's a veil over people's eyes where it doesn't, you know, you, you have to kind of reinstate this multiple it's the end of romans times. one yeah Islam. that's yeah, what it is that's good. you read romans one you suppress the truth long enough god gives you up to your own desires you're engaged in futile thinking yeah. to the point where you're not only doing evil you're encouraging other people to do yeah. evil yeah. romans one verses 18 to 31 or 32 is the most accurate description of our culture <laughs> yet it's written two thousand years ago yeah uh, uh i want to get into how you believe the church can better engage, mm -hmm. right? Because you said a lot of this is a byproduct of the church not engaging. Mm -hmm. I also want to get on a viral video you had where I reacted to it, where you said one of the biggest issues we had in terms of family is not gay marriage. It's mm -hmm. actually um, divorce. Divorce, divorce laws. Yeah, yeah. I want to get into that. Um, but uh, j just one last tidbit on this. I, I, I do think that there's, there's, a, there's a moment right now where people are saying, okay, I don't care what other people do in the privacy of their own homes, mm -hmm. but this consistently being pushed is is getting ridiculous. And I'll give you an example from a family member. A family member of mine works in a world, I'll tell you who it is offline, uh, and they run a company and they had like a Discord. And in this Discord, um, they have a video game channel where they talk about the latest video games. I don't know why they want to business discord video. like uh -huh. what, are, what are you guys doing right uh -huh. like y'all got uh -huh. too much time on your hands uh -huh. i hate meetings i hate slack i hate all of it all right, right? right but they have this discord and in the discord there is a all the employees and one of the employees was talking about the video games and he was talking about the new harry potter video game mm. and sure enough one of the transformers that worked for the company mm -hmm. who already wasn't a great employee goes into this discord and and like completely flips that this person was talking about Harry Potter because the author of Harry Potter is deemed oh is yeah, deemed transphobic transphobic yeah, yeah. this is a real story yeah okay and and basically this is now again this is one of my family members who's not a Christian he uh, probably affirms LGTV lifestyle mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff right uh, he doesn't think it's a sin mm -hmm. and he's telling me this story and he's like. This transformer basically ends up bullying the other person in the Discord and shaming them for playing this Harry Potter video game to the point where the the executives have to step in and say, "You need to stop. Like you cannot bully people like this." He already apologized. Like leave it alone. This escalated them to this to them firing this transformer employee. Really? And in this whole story, he's trying to use the proper pronouns. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, you know, because they're like non-binary or something. Uh -huh. like, and they, I said, just say she. Uh-huh. Just say she. Stop. Uh -huh. You know, I said, I said uh -huh. you know this is nonsense. Right. You telling me this story proves that you know this is nonsense, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And he's laughing about it and we're having a good time. But this is this is to the point where, and, and I hear these stories all the time. This is a family member of mine. And so he's telling me this and he's just like, yeah, this stuff's getting kind of nuts, man. It this is. This is getting pretty nuts. And we as a company don't even know how to deal with it. And 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 it's exhausting to, to be thinking about this stuff. And so I'm I'm I think if there's one of those stories that that, that I of a family member I know, there's other stories I'm hearing that they ended up firing this person. She or she threatened to sue. And uh and so they kind of like, you know, got away from it and and they're like now 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 here now here's the flip side of all this. Now they're hesitant to hire somebody from this community. Yeah, that's the downside of it's it. It's a downside yeah, of it. Yeah, people are going to go, I don't want the headache. Yep. In fact, it does the same thing. That's one of the problems with affirmative action. Mm -hmm. 
is that people think, well, if I hire somebody who's a minority, they're going to have a case against me if they get fired legitimately. Like they're not doing their job. Yep. They can spin it in such a way that now they're going to. So I'm not even going to hire any minorities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has the has the opposite has effect the opposite of what the effect. law is supposed to try and help. That's right. Hire minorities. Right. And so that, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Yep. And yep. J.K. Rowling, to her credit, has decided, look, you're erasing women mm -hmm. by claiming uh, all these trans rights. And mm -hmm. she has no problem personally with this morally. Mm -hmm. She just has a problem with the fact that you're erasing women. Yep. Why? Yep. As, we, as we point out in the book, Correct, Not Politically Correct, that despite the fact that advocates of transgenderism claim there are multiple genders, mm -hmm. the whole view presupposes only two genders. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if I'm a man, yet I psychologically think I'm a woman, mm -hmm. I have to have some idea what a man is and some idea what a woman is mm -hmm. to know I have this mismatch between my psychology and my biology. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't know what a man or a woman was, transgenderism would be impossible. Yep. Yep. Also, for me to try and make the so-called transition, which is biologically impossible, but if I try and do it, again, I have to have some idea what a man is and some idea sure. what a woman is to try and make that transition. Sure. Again, if those genders didn't exist, right. there would be no way to, 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 to be a transgender. Yeah. So yeah. on one hand, they're trying to say there's an infinite number of genders. On the other hand, they have to admit there are only two because without it, there's no way to be a transgender. Yep, 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 yep. Because then you're just kind of cosplaying as the opposite mm -hmm. gender, which is offensive to, the, to that. <laughs> like, now you're doing... Things that are stereotypical of women, but not all women exhibit right. these stereotypical attributes that you're now doing, like the, the Dylan Mulvaney thing, right? Where he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, this I, is this is why J.K. Rowling said you're erasing women because if there are no genders, there are no women, and if there are no women, there are no women's rights. Mm, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And, and she's right. Yep. <laughs> you that's know, right. that's right. That's so right. So you're you're, and as you see, what's going on in women's sports. Uh, it's uh, women are being unfairly disadvantaged mm -hmm. because biological men are getting into their sports and winning uh, these meets and winning these uh, events yeah. that women have been training for for years. That's right. I mean, imagine if, what's his name, Thomas, Leah Thomas, I don't know Leah what, Thomas, what his yeah. real name is, yeah. um, his, his birth name, mm -hmm. but a male, he wants to go to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Imagine if he gets in the Olympics and wins an event that a woman has been training for for years, mm -hmm. and he just has the biology to beat her more easily. Yeah. So uh, how's that fair to her? So this is where I think the the left made a massive miscalculation and misstep. Mm. Is they went from the party of equity and the sense of racial equity. Yeah. And the BLM thing, mm -hmm. which which we could talk about. It. Someone you had a really interesting conversation with someone who had a conversation with you about the CRT stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember I was watching that. And I was like, oh, this is this is cool. This It was cool to see you even engage in the conversation and, and, and be gracious and gentle. So it's like they went from that, which I think is, even though there's connection to Marxism there, right, and some of the class mm -hmm. warfare stuff mm -hmm. there, but it, they went from that to hitching their wagon behind, like, trans sports. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, what a gross miscalculation. But when you look at the BLM initial statement mm -hmm. and the stuff they were for – disrupting the nuclear family, trans rights, all these things. It makes sense that the connection there happened, but I think there's a lot of folks that 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 I'm friendly with that are disoriented. Like, what do you, whoa, 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 why are we back doing all this other insanity? Like, we just don't want people to be to be mistreated by police. Mm -hmm. Like, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. We need to deal with that issue. Body cameras, right. uh, there's the eight count weight campaign, all these different things that they've developed. And now all this other stuff got backdoored, and it seems like the le the left just went completely full force on this stuff. And now I'm starting to see some tension. I mean, even if you look at um, uh, left leftist platforms like the Young Turks, right? They're even saying um, Anna, I think her name is Anna Kasparian. She's an Armenian girl on there. Mm -hmm. Fully, I mean, fully, 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 fully anti-Christian, anti-God, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And she's she's now being canceled within this ecosystem because she's not dealing with some of the trans insanity and so there's even like wasn't she on patrick bet david yeah, yeah, show? She was on patrick david's show yeah and she's going this is crazy this is crazy it the the left is eating itself it basically is. it is what you know why uh and you know why this is maybe our our audience might not the reason you have strange bedfellows is because they buy into the marxist oppressor oppressed right. category this is why you will have um the lgtv people as you put it siding with Hamas mm -hmm. in uh, Israel mm -hmm. when the first people Hamas would throw off a building would yep. be the LGTV people, right. as you put it. That's right. 
you go, how, how can these people agree with one another because they're just buying into the oppress, oppressor? Now think about this. Which people group in the history of the world has been more oppressed than any other? Jews. That's right. Obviously. Mm -hmm. And yet these people think they're the oppressors. Mm -hmm. Jews have been yeah. more oppressed, more tortured, more beaten, more killed than any other group in history. I'm not saying everything Jews do is correct. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying everything Israel does is correct. I'm simply saying if you look at history, they're not the oppressor, mm -hmm. they're the oppressed, and yet these people who are buying into Marxism are trying to say, oh no, Jews are the oppressors. Mm -hmm. And and that's why they have such strange bedfellows. It's really yeah. hard to figure well, this out. Well, it's that weird Venn diagram, yeah. of, like the overlap, right? Mm -hmm. Like you guys, the, the overlap becomes oppressor, oppressed mm -hmm. ideology. And a lot of it is they say because, you know, Hamas doesn't think like the West, but they know how the West thinks. Mm -hmm. And so that's they're, right. they're playing right into this sort of ideology, even though you're, you're totally right. Like they, I mean, that... I believe in mo most of those countries, those types of relations aren't even legal. Meaning, like if you go to Dubai, like you're not allowed to. Oh, of course not. No, to, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it's like the the places where <laughs> there's the most tolerance mm -hmm. and or acceptance are the places that are have the most Christian influence. Yeah, I want to ask our uh, people out there to think about this. What, <clears throat> which countries have more freedom? Countries that have uh, Christianity in their background or countries that have Islam in their background. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. think about that. Yep. Yep. It's always the Christian countries. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because we believe in individual human rights. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we get the rights wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at least we agree on people have rights. Mm -hmm. Whereas Muslims generally say, no, yeah. Sharia law is the way. Yeah. And if you don't like it, you're either going to pay a tax or you're going to die. The state is mm -hmm. more important mm -hmm. than the individual. Mm -hmm. You, If you disrupt the state, mm -hmm. we can... You know, or you disrupt consequences. Allah. Or you, well, yeah. And, and that's, that's, of course, the problem in Marxism, too. In atheism, individuals don't matter. The state is eternal because individuals are not eternal. Individuals mm -hmm. die, it's over. Mm -hmm. The state goes on. Mm -hmm. And where in Christianity, we believe, no, the individual goes on. States are not eternal. Mm -hmm. America is not going to is not going to exist in heaven, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. America is one day going to go away, but the individual matters. Mm -hmm. And so for these people who, on one hand, want to have all sorts of rights, even though we, they're not really rights, mm -hmm. they want to have rights in America, at least have the ability to, to fight for them here. If they go over to, to Gaza, they're going to be thrown off a building yep. and they can't see this connection. Yep. Talk yep. about cognitive dissidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, uh, how can the church better engage? You, you've mentioned that repeatedly, mm -hmm. right? Um, what is that practically like? Because I mean, again, I get I get the incredible benefit of doing this for a living. Mm -hmm. um, I travel a bit. I have a lot of friends that are and family members that aren't are not Christians. So a lot of times they'll just ask me these sorts of questions. Like we've talked about the unborn. We've talked about Israel. We've had all these conversations with my family. And so I, I kind of get the advantage of like people come to my non-Christian friends and family come to me about mm -hmm, these mm -hmm, things. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I kind of am, and I, I live in this world, so mm -hmm. it's easy for me to have these conversations. Sure. But how can the church as a, 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 at scale engage Christians who are watching this? How can they engage? Well, the church itself needs to train the people in the pews how to engage. Mm -hmm. They need to train them in evidence that Christianity is true. Of course, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. Mm -hmm. You know, does truth exist? Does God exist? Mm -hmm. Are miracles possible? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? What's the evidence? Mm -hmm. Because if Jesus rose from the dead, game over, Christianity is true. If he that's didn't right. rise from the dead, game over, it's false. That's right. So you need to train people on how to do that, which is, of course, what we try and do. And then secondly, you got to train people to ask a lot of questions. Rather than make statements, ask questions. Mm. So when someone says something, like suppose someone says, um, well, I can't believe the Bible because it's been changed throughout the centuries. Mm -hmm. Don't go into a dissertation as to why it hasn't. Mm -hmm. Ask them questions. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. What do you mean it's been changed throughout the centuries? Next question. Uh, what evidence do you have for that position? Mm -hmm. Or what how did you come to that conclusion? Mm -hmm. These are questions from my friend Greg Kokel's book, mm -hmm. Tactics. Mm -hmm. Ask questions mm -hmm. to try and discover where the other person's coming from because when somebody says something, it's not your job to refute what they say, it's their job to support what they say. That's right. So they might say, well, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I think it's been changed throughout the centuries. You know why? They just heard a slogan. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they, they don't have any evidence for it. Yeah. You know, if you ask them, 
Oh, the, the best part is when they just bring up the Council of Nicaea randomly. Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> Council of Nicaea, that's where they are. Uh, that's right. That's uh, right. It's like whatever they don't like, they uh -huh. just blame on the Council of that's Nicaea. Right. That's like, right. The, the Bible, uh, the Trinity, uh, Council of Nicaea <laughs> did it all. It's hilarious. So just, just ask some questions. That's yeah. right, Council of Nicaea. Say, what evidence do you have for that? Right. I mean, have you investigated the manuscript evidence for yourself? Right. I can almost guarantee you the person isn't going to say, isn't going to say, yeah, you know, just last night I was up reading a book about the Byzantine line of mm -hmm. manuscripts. Mm -hmm. right. Nobody's going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can say the third question. I'm giving three questions here that people ought to I love it. just put in their mind. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean by that? How'd you come to that conclusion? Have you ever considered? Have you ever considered that we didn't get the Bible oh, that's good. like the telephone game, like a lot of people think? Yeah. We got the Bible by people who were there. They wrote it down. Those manuscripts were copied, and there's more than 5,000, almost 6,000 handwritten Greek manuscripts of the New Testament from the second century all the way to the printing press. Mm -hmm. and, when, and then we have 15,000 or so in other languages. When we compare all those manuscripts, we can recon reconstruct the original to 99% accuracy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a way of showing people some evidence back without being offensive. That's good. Ask them questions. Just keep yeah. asking questions. That's good. What do you mean by that's that? How'd you come to that conclusion? Have you ever considered? Yeah, it's very, very Socratic, right? Yes. The way you're, you're describing it. By the way, those brilliant. questions are, we have an app, the cross-examined app, okay. two words in the app store, cross-examined. If you go there, uh, y y in the app, you'll go to quick answers and these questions are in there. I love that. Yeah. Get that app guys. Mm -hmm. Um, that's amazing. So I think asking questions is that, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a very brilliant way of engaging in these. In fact, Ruslan, right? Can we say what day it is right now? What's today? Today's the 29th of January, mm -hmm. 2024. On our YouTube channel, our team just released an extended cut of an interaction I had with an LGBTQ person mm -hmm. at Fresno State. Mm -hmm. Is that the one that went viral where yeah. she was very combative? Yes. Well, yes. now we put the whole nine minute conversation okay. up today. Okay, great. Okay. Now, if you watch that interaction. Uh -huh. She or he, I'm not, I still don't know if Mav, this person was a he or a she or is a he or a she, mm -hmm. but Mav started making moral pronouncements. Mm -hmm. I have rights. Mm -hmm. I haven't been treated well. Mm -hmm. Christians have been evil to me, this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I started asking questions. What's your standard? Mm -hmm. What's your moral standard? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that's a right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see the conversation just devolved into almost a shouting match on her part or mm -hmm. his part mm -hmm. because... Mav couldn't answer simple questions like, where are you getting this moral standard from? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why do you think that's true? Why do you think that's right? Mm -hmm. And so asking questions is the key. Now, in a public forum, I'm not trying to convince the other person. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to convince the people in the audience. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking questions and we'll see how it goes. In a mm -hmm. private forum mm -hmm. where you have more time mm -hmm. and can nuance things, mm -hmm. Then you're trying to convince the other person. Mm. But if you're in a debate publicly, mm -hmm. my job is not going to convince the other person. Yeah. My job is to demonstrate uh, a Christian attitude and asking the right questions so people can then go, yeah, he asked her some questions that she couldn't answer. Mm. I'm planting a seed at that yeah. point. Yeah. Right. Uh, how are you considering you, you being very open about these views? Mm -hmm. How are you able to go into these public places? A lot of these are universities. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and host these these discussions we, we and, are and then have non-Christians come in and, and be angry when they engage with you. Yeah, we're invited by Christian groups. Okay. So if it's a state school like Fresno State, mm -hmm. uh, most of the schools we go to are state schools, so they can't deny us because there's, there's a Supreme Court decision about equal access. Mm -hmm. If they invite an atheist, they have to not prevent a Christian from coming and mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. So any Christian group on campus, whether it's Crew, whether it's InterVarsity, whether it's mm -hmm. Ratio Christi, which mm -hmm. is a, a group devoted to apologetics, mm -hmm. and many others can invite us. They just need to go to crossexamine.org, click on Invite Us to Campus, and we'll show up. Mm -hmm. And then we publicize it on campus, around the community, and we get people from campus, including atheists, showing up, mm -hmm. as you'll see. And then, of course, people from the community come as well. So it's it's done through Christian groups, Got equal it. access. Got it. That's mm -hmm. okay. So... <laughs> And you they, can go too. Yeah. If you want to go to a college campus, yeah. They can invite you. Got Christian it. group can you can And so in terms of that, like a lot of these uh, are they um is the cross examined ministry basically kind of occurring the cost to get you yes, to these places? Yes, that's why we raise money to do this. Because we don't charge students a dime. They that's come beautiful. for free. That's beautiful. So that's that's if if people go to crossexamine.org and they want to donate, that's yeah. where the money's going to wow. go to college campuses wow. and do our podcast and TV show and all that. That's I love that. that's why we do it. I love that. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of 
how many interactions have you had that have gotten that tense before? Is it often or is it not often? Because that was the, by, by far, I've seen a lot of your yeah. videos. That far, by far, she seemed to be the most combative. Yeah, I would probably say 98% of the people are more calm and respectful than that person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so most of the time, people who come to these events already kind of know what we're doing. And if they don't, when they get in the session, they realize I'm not coming in there and going, well, the Bible says mm -hmm. I'm giving evidence that Christianity is true. Mm -hmm. And I'm using logic and philosophy and science and in ways to show that, yeah, this, this is reasonable to believe. Mm -hmm. So by the time the Q&A rolls around, they know it's not just somebody up there saying, you just got to believe blindly, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's not what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So there's almost a level of respect people give because they've sat through the presentation and they know that I'm not up there just saying, have faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think some of that tamps down some of the aggression, yep. but let me also say this. If I was Ben Shapiro mm -hmm. or Charlie Kirk mm -hmm. or one of these people that go to college campuses and give more of a political message, mm -hmm. I would get more hostility mm. and they do, you know, they have to bring armed guards with them, mm -hmm. especially Ben Shapiro, mm -hmm. because they, Ben is given more of a political message. And I, 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 two of my five books are on politics. I mean, I love politics. I love getting Christians engaged in politics, mm -hmm. but that's not my primary message going on to a college campus. Mm -hmm. It's to give them evidence that Christianity is indeed true, which should then inform their politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Every area of your life ought to be governed by Jesus. Mm -hmm. As I always ask Christians, what area of your life isn't governed by Jesus? Yep. Oh, well, then you're you're not you're not living the Christian life yep. fully. Then. Yep. 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 No, that's good. Um, that's interesting. Uh, the politics business, because I think here's here's where I've been. And I think this is where some people maybe relate to is I think I've evolved when I was younger. I was I was I was when I first got saved, I was very conservative. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I kind of evolved into this like liberal live and let live type mm -hmm. of approach. Libertarian kind of way? Well, yeah. liberal initially, then libertarian. Okay. And now I'm back to being a conservative, mm -hmm. right? Where I'm like, oh man, like, yeah, no. Like, because you live and let live, there's going to be stuff that gets passed that is counter to human flourishing, mm -hmm. counter to these things, which are which are uh, harmful to people mm -hmm. ultimately, right? And then, then I evolved into more of a libertarian position but then the libertarian position is is part liberal but because because then their libertarians are okay with the termination of babies which i'm not and now it kind of came full circle and i'm back to probably the last four years mm. fairly conservative i think the tough part where if, if people are being honest um the tough part within the conservative party right now seems or, or it seems to be trump yeah of course, right yeah. like like mm -hmm. man good policies mm -hmm. right Delivered on the Supreme Court mm -hmm. promises, yep. which led to Roe v. Wade getting overturned. Mm -hmm. But gosh darn it, we're talking about Jesus infusing everything. Mm -hmm. And it seems, which I think is a, a fair critique, the entire evangelical community went from no, no Trump, Trump bad, John MacArthur making these statements to... Fast forward a year or two later, if you're not voting for Trump, you're not a Christian. Or if you're not voting Republican, mm -mm 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 -mm. you're not a Christian. Right? Just complete polar shift. Right. And it was like, yes, I understand we're not electing a pastor. I get it. But, gosh, and this was Tim from the New Evangelicals critique, and this is kind of what led to his this deconstruction he shared it on my channel, was he said, the very thing that you guys told me not to get behind, everybody got in line and got behind. Okay, let me, let me just ask you a question here. Sure. Now you're going to do the thing to me. No, I, I, <laughs> no, I, it's, it's not for you. It's for Tim. Yeah, yeah. Tim, because Christians support Trump, does that mean Christianity's false? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So where, where do you come off? Right. You're deconstruct. If if your faith was built on how Christians behave politically, yes. then you, you weren't a Christian to begin with. Yeah. The reason we're Christians is not 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 because we uh, we like a certain political view. Sure. Uh, Christianity informs our political view. Yeah. Christianity doesn't... Our political views don't determine Christianity. He's sure. got it backwards. Sure. The reason we're Christians is because... There is a God. We're not him. Jesus came, rose from the dead to prove he is our sacrifice, and that one day we'll rise from the dead as well if we trust in what he's done. Yep. We're going to be forgiven and given his righteousness. In other words, we're Christian because it's true. Yes. Now, out of that truth, that truth informs everything else we do. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with Tim if he were to say, look, Trump is boorish. 
Trump is unkind. Mm -hmm. Trump has lied. Mm -hmm. Trump has done immoral things. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the primaries, I didn't vote for Trump. Mm -hmm. I, the, the, in 2016, I voted for Ted Cruz. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just thought he was a better candidate mm -hmm. morally and policy-wise. Sure. Trump got in. I thought Trump's policies were good. I'm still upset with his boorish behavior. I, look, I've been with Trump a couple times personally. Mm -hmm. I, I ran a, 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 uh, a meeting for him once mm -hmm. with uh, religious leaders. Uh, and, you know, Trump is an odd human being. Let's just admit it. Mm -hmm. um, and other people who have been with him have said the same thing. Trump is the opposite of most politicians. Most politicians are nice in public and they're jerks in pri private. Mm -hmm. Trump is the opposite. That's, I've heard that. Trump before. is nice in person mm -hmm. and he's a jerk in public. Mm -hmm. And you go, why is that? Mm -hmm. Lay all that aside for a second. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to the general election, you've mm -hmm. only got two choices, mm -hmm. honestly, mm -hmm. right? And I would love to have a guy who is a good personality mm -hmm. behavior-wise and has great policies. Mm -hmm. But if I could only have one or the other, it's mm -hmm. going to be the policies. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because when you're sending a president to Washington, you're sending 5,000 people to Washington, sure. an entire administration and a platform. Mm -hmm. And if you look right now at the platforms, the Democrat platform and the Republican platform, there's no comparison anymore. Yeah, I, I would totally agree. I don't think there's a comparison 100% yeah. with you. I guess my question is deeper to what is it about... Is it a Christian thing or is it a conservative thing? Or what is it where we, I feel like we had other alternatives in the primaries. I we did. I, I feel like Ron DeSantis was fantastic. I, 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 I'm a DeSantis guy. Right? I agree with you. So yeah. why not him? Like, it, like we would all look at it as people of yeah. faith and then we'd be like, oh yeah, clearly like the obvious mm -hmm. similar policies, mm -hmm. maybe a little different here or there. Loved how he handled COVID. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, some of the banning of the books thing was a little weird in terms of the, just the way they represented. Can I it, say but, something about sure, that? Sure. Um, selecting books for a library is not banning books. Okay. It's not censorship. Every library can only carry a finite number of books. Sure. And a library that is selecting books for children mm -hmm. has to select books for children mm -hmm. and not books for adults. Mm -hmm. And so technically it's not censoring the books that adults could read. Yeah. It's saying these are the books that are morally, socially, and sure. intellectually yeah. appropriate for kids. I and I so, was totally with you. I'm referring yeah. more to the way it came off. I'm not oh, saying this is— The way it came is, off. Well, the media is going to spin it. I'm, I'm yeah, saying right. that, that there was some misunderstanding, miscommunication right. that seemed to say, hey, we're not going to ban the stuff about sex. Or like, I'm there with it. Right. It was when it got to, like, we're, we're going to kind of water down how horrific slavery really was. We're mm, going to water mm, down mm. how much discrimination there really was mm. against black people in this mm. country. Well, they, they shouldn't think, do that. Right. And yeah. I think that's where, again— because everybody doesn't have time to get into the minutia sure. of the details mm -hmm. where where we're going into those details and and we're like hey um i don't think we should change we shouldn't say that um, america is a racist country and everybody's bad and systemic racism is impacting every we shouldn't say that but we also shouldn't water down the reality of the Tulsa race riots. Of course we, not. We shouldn't water yeah. these things down. And so I think when, when I when I'm talking, and this, by the way, this is Jordan Peterson also agreeing with me mm. on this, coming out and saying, yeah, some of this stuff in terms of banning books regarding history, mm -hmm. not the best idea. Right. However, it, 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 we'd have to then get in, in the details of what these books sure. were and sure. the minutiae of it. But I think on a surface level, so that's what I meant by that. I'm not talking about the 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 um the, the crazy queer theories well, yeah stuff. in elementary school yes. you know yes heather has two mommies or yes. or the drag queen stuff yes. or whatever yes, yes. i think yeah. i think i think i think removing stuff that positions america as the villain in mm -hmm. an american school is bizarre mm -hmm. but i think removing stuff that waters down mm -hmm. the reality of some of these things that happen to native americans to black people i, I don't think that does anybody any favors right no i agree okay. but go back you were you were talking about the santas for a while why didn't yeah. christians uh select the santas that's the, i mean yeah. honestly i, I yeah. didn't vote for trump in either election yeah um i voted libertarian okay but uh -huh. past times i'm also in california so for me it's like i don't think my vote really counts here <laughs> right it's gonna right. go one way yeah. um but, but this let me say this sure if Christians in California voted biblically, California would be red. I think I think you're right because there are more Christians in California than any other state. Oh, that's you don't realize that mm. because there's 40 million people living here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, which means there's a lot of Christians, mm -hmm. and the problem is we 
we don't vote because ah, it's not going to matter. No, if yeah. Christians voted biblically, yeah. California would be red. Well, I voted libertarian mm-hmm. uh, in the general election. Mm-hmm. All the other stuff, I vote in, in the um, like the laws and the things that are yeah. getting passed, right? So I vote in those. Oh, or the congressmen, you know, or Congress people that you vote in, mm-hmm. some of them are down ballot. People will go to a presidential election mm-hmm. and then vote down ballot. Sure. But if they figure, ah, it's no sense voting here in a California yeah, for yeah. the president, yeah. then they don't vote down ballot, and then the yeah. Congress goes the wrong way. I think our our representatives in this district, mm-hmm. uh, in, in terms of like Southern California and I think are more conservative. Yeah, now. I don't I, I don't know that for a fact, but I think I, I'm with you there. The, no, they are. Yeah. The problem is what I'm saying is when people say it's, my vote's not going to matter. It might not matter at the presidential level, yeah. but it matters at the congressional level Absolutely. and down ballot. That's why Absolutely. you still need to go vote. Yes. I, yeah. I, yeah. And I am, yeah. I'm not saying don't go vote. Yeah. I'm saying I'm having trouble voting for Trump on a general election. And I think there's a lot of people yeah. that are like me. Yeah, I get it. Now, I'm not in a swing state. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I, I, I don't feel that burden. That's kind right. of what I'm saying. I get right? it. I'm, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't feel like, oh, man, like if enough people, it, it, it's not going to move the needle here. Yeah. What, what I'm, what I'm going to say is. Look, how you vote doesn't determine whether you're a Christian or not. Mm -hmm. I will say this, though. If you are a Christian, you ought to be voting for conservative principles because, biblically, God doesn't want children murdered. Agreed. God doesn't believe in marriage other than a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. God believes that security is important, Mm -hmm. okay? I mean, there's a a wall around Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know what I mean? Um, God believes that uh, people should have... Uh, the ability to worship him without government interference. God believes in, in, in all of these things. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me when you look at the party platforms Mm -hmm. and also, by the way, God believes that you ought not divide people racially, Mm -hmm. which is what the Democrat platform wants to do. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the 2020 Democrat platform, people don't really, if you read it, it says we believe in using race to determine preference. Mm, I'm not yeah. using, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, <laughs> yeah. but basically That's they want to use the, race. The, the Kim D stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. getting into yeah. fixed past yeah. discrimination with current discrimination. They want to use race to discriminate. That's not the biblical way. Agreed. So you ought to vote that way. Now, if you can't, if you say, well, I can't vote for Trump, I get it. Okay, if you don't think you can do that, that's your on your own conscience. But you ought not be voting for the Democrat platform. I, I, I 100% yeah. agree with you. So, why not a better conservative uh, uh, selection in the conservatives? I mean, the, in the primaries. Like, why why not DeSantis? Well, actually, we don't, I like I like Vivek, and he's not even a Christian. Yeah, I know. But I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh man, like yeah. he's just. I feel like Vivek handles himself much better mm-hmm. when he's under pressure and he's yeah. able to navigate these conversations right. without coming off like a jerk. Right. And m- more of the same policies, if not even more conservative in a lot of his policies. Again, we remove the fact that he's not a Christian, right? Or DeSantis. Like, I think both of those were... So why did Christians not get behind him in the primaries? Well, actually, we don't know if they've gotten behind him in the primaries because we've only had one. <laughs> I know? mean, the way it's yeah. looking I mean, is it's about to be a landslide. Yeah, yeah. well, because DeSantis is already out. DeSantis I mean, he was, is out. He was out right after Vivek Iowa. Vivek is out. Vivek is out. It's only Haley and, and Trump. And, Which uh, I don't. I don't like Haley. No, I. I. I mean, she'd be better than Biden sure. because she'd bring a better platform than Biden. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. And and you know, I think part of this might be motivated too by the fact that, let's be honest, um, Trump turns people off, but he also inspires people. Mm-hmm. Right. You either love him or you hate him. Mm-hmm. But secondly, there's been. It's not even debatable now that the left has tried to uh, take out Trump by politicizing the justice system. Mm -hmm. And people are going, that can't stand. Mm -hmm. If we have a politicized justice system, who's next? Mm -hmm. And so it's actually counterproductive for the left to try and do this because Mm -hmm. conservatives are going, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. We're going to vote for Trump now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to double down our support for Trump. We're going to overlook all this stuff because you're trying to railroad this guy. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah, I mean, again, another gross miscalculation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You do that and you're not realizing that it's backfiring Mm -hmm. and it's doing the opposite Mm -hmm. effect. I mean, look at Adam Schiff here. He's running for Senate here in California. Mm -hmm. I see his uh, just a couple days here seeing the TV during the football game. You know, he's. He's, I protected this country against a radical president. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what he won't, he didn't say is that he lied mm-hmm. trying to protect uh, the country from Trump mm-hmm. about the whole Russian thing. It's mm-hmm. a big, it was a big hoax from the yep. beginning yep. Yep. and yep. they yep. knew it. Yep. And yet he's trying to say, yeah, he's going to, 
he, he should be a senator. No, mm -hmm. he lied from the very beginning. The whole mm -hmm. the whole Russia collusion thing yeah, yeah, yeah. was actually something Hillary did. Right, right. Not, it's just, yeah. it's frustrating. And yeah. so people may be just doubling down. But look, you're not going to get from me that, that Christians are well-informed voters. They're not, tragically. Mm -hmm. It's the church's fault. Mm -hmm. We ought to be informing people on how to vote properly. I'm Not who to vote for, sure, but how to vote. Sure, vote these vote. issues. Yeah. 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 The, um, how many... I haven't looked at the demographics of this, but how many practicing people of faith are in America today? Because mm. that number has declined. Sure. And by practicing, I don't mean identify as Christian because mm. it'd still be, I'll say 60%, 65% would mm -hmm. identify as Christian. But yeah. I mean, attend church at least once a month. You, you, oh, yeah. It's it's lower than 50%. It's somewhere around 40%. 40%. Yeah, 40-something 40 percent. percent. That's still a lot of people. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. It's like a if ton those of people, people were, were, were engaged mm -hmm. in the primaries and they attended mm -hmm. church, or let's mm -hmm. just say in a, a biblical church, mm -hmm. right, that still believed in this, the, 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 the things that we say are not essential in terms of salvation or not, but mm -hmm. essential in terms of like, you know, hey, these are the orthodox views of right. these things, right? I wonder if that would move the needle in terms of the, the primaries and the goofiness that we're seeing in these primaries. Yeah, you know what's going to move the needle? It would be a depression. I'm not rooting for a depression, mm. but I I think one of the biggest problems we have is prosperity, mm -hmm. too much prosperity. Mm -hmm. now, I don't want people to be not prosperous. Don't get me wrong. I'm simply mm -hmm. saying when prosperity uh, overtakes us in the sense that we think, hey, we got this all figured out. We don't need God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we set ourselves up for a fall. Pride comes mm. before the fall, as the scriptures say. Mm. And if you look at the cycle in Judges, mm -hmm. you know, that 400-year, 350-year period mm -hmm. when they didn't have a king, mm -hmm. what happened to Israel? Mm. When they got prosperous, they forgot about God, mm. and they did evil. God judged them. Then mm. they repented. They came back to God. Mm -hmm. They got prosperous again. Then they the cycle went on again. Yeah. They forgot about God. They yeah. did evil. Judge. Where are we in America now, if yeah. you think about it? Yeah. We're yeah. on the edge of prosperity being about to be judged, it seems to me, mm. for the evil that we're doing. Mm. Gosh. What do you think that looks like? I don't know. I'm, not, I'm no prophet, but uh, eventually the, the, eventually, this country is going to break up, mm. I think. I mean, Texas is going to secede. Someone, someone's going to say enough of this. Mm. Now, what happens? It's not as simple as that. What happens? What happens if, say, Texas secedes? What currency do they have? What about Social Security benefits? Mm. What about the 50% of people who are getting money from the federal government? Do they stop getting, you know, there's a whole bunch of dominoes that are going to fall. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I submit to you it's probably going to happen from an internal moral decline, mm. much more so than an external enemy. Mm. Interesting. And that's what happened to the Roman Empire. Yeah. It degraded morally from the inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, not from an external force. Yeah, that's interesting. You, you bring up Texas. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the border situation there? I've been down that rabbit hole, and I was I was shocked to find out that Biden basically, when he got elected, removed one of the policies, which yeah. is if someone comes over illegally yeah. at the border. And I'm an immigrant, so I yeah. I, I, yeah. I think immigrants. But you did it legally. Yeah, we we did you it got legally, here legally as yeah. as refugees. Yeah. Um, and I have friends that are dreamers and, and a mm -hmm. part of the DACA thing, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's a little different. If you come here as a baby, yeah. I don't think you're shipping anybody back to mm -hmm. their country. Mm -hmm. they're, they're American. They, sure. That's all they know, right? Yeah. But I think when my understanding is that they had a law, Trump had a law under his policy that if you come over, they catch, they release back to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Biden on day one changed that law right. where you catch, you release here, yeah. and they get a ticket to come back to a court date. Yeah, what a joke. Which... That's when the entire migrant crisis started. All these people started right. hearing this thing was going to change, and that's when more and more and more people from uh, mm -hmm. Central America started coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the governor in Texas basically said that they weren't protecting the borders mm -hmm. from a federal standpoint, and the Supreme Court did a, a first ruling, but I think it got shot down to a, a lower district court. Now they're trying to bring it back. to. What, what do you make of all this? Well— it seems like globalists are in charge mm. uh, of what's going on now. They mm -hmm. they eventually want to get to a one world government. That's their goal. And um, but here's here's what both of us are going to be accused of, Ruslan, by talking about this. Um, if you're not for an open border, somehow you're xenophobic mm. or you're racist or Sheesh. something, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is the kind of simplistic analysis that people need to avoid. Mm -hmm. This is a much more nuanced. 
um, discussion mm -hmm. than just calling somebody who says, I think we ought to have a secure border, a xenophobe. Mm -hmm. Because everybody believes in secure borders. I always ask people, do you have a lock on your door? Mm -hmm. Oh, you do. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you know that security is important. Mm -hmm. You agree on a border, you're just disagreeing on where the border is. That's good. That's good. Right? Yeah. Everybody has a lock on their door because people are inherently evil mm -hmm. and uh, we need to protect ourselves from evil. Mm -hmm. What is coming across that border? I mean, as Christians, we should want people to have freedom, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we can uncritically accept people in this country without proper screening. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have terrorists coming over. We have drugs coming over. We have children being sex trafficked over. Mm -hmm. And Biden has turned a blind eye to all of this. Mm -hmm. Mayorkas, the, the head of, uh, what is he, HH, uh, he's, he's the head of the border. I can't remember the, the, uh, the government agency he's over. Um, but he's now about to be impeached. He won't, it, he won't be convicted, but he's mm -hmm. about to be impeached by the House mm -hmm. because he's not paying attention to the border. He's mm -hmm. allowing all this to go on. Mm -hmm. And we don't need a new law. Mm -hmm. We just need to actually enforce the laws that are already on the books mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. fix the border crisis. Mm -hmm. And Biden can, in a heartbeat, do an executive order and go back to the Trump law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just really release yeah, them back yeah, to back, yeah, yeah. which would make less people probably come. That's over. right. Um, I think they're, the the compromise of the bill they're trying to pass is the Democrats want uh, five thousand encounters a day before the mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. border gets shut down. Mm -hmm. The Republican wants three thousand before the border shut down. And, and I'm like, these three thousand or five thousand, whichever it is, shut it down. Are they still coming over? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, they, yeah, We yeah. meet them there and then right. they come over. Like, how does this? I, I'm 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 so perplexed. Okay, let me ask you this: If you had to steel man this mm -hmm. from the Democratic side. Mm -hmm. What would your explanation is? Because I I was talking to my wife about it, and I'm like, I really don't see their. I don't understand. Like, are they concerned for birth rates? So we need more immigrants. Like votes w w or votes. Like, what is it? Like, so so if you I, have to be give a good faith steel man. Well, I have not seen any arguments from that from that side. Maybe okay. I just missed them. Have you seen any arguments? I, I, I have. No, I have. They're just turning a blind eye to it. Hmm. It it seems there's something nefarious going on here. Right. Yeah. That's that's part of the problem mm -hmm. is they don't want a secure border. Mm. And like, to be honest. But why? Why do you think they do? I, I don't think it's I don't. I, uh, what is the um, don't ascribe to malicious intent, which right. that could be described with incompetence. Right. right? Well, like I, I, if, I, if we I, if we didn't do malicious intent mm -hmm, nefarious and mm -hmm. we said they're just incompetent and bureaucratic, then what would the uh, the good faith? The good faith be? may be, well, people have a right to a freedom. Mm -hmm. Right. And they come here. Right. Uh, but. Why we might say they have a right to freedom or they personally have a right to freedom, it doesn't mean America needs to provide it to them. Sure. It would be better if freedom was a value of the country in which they live. Sure. Why sure. don't we ex export freedom to those countries? Mm -hmm. Because obviously not everybody can come to America. It's impossible. Sure. So why aren't we exporting? Well, that's imperialistic. Oh, you're going to you're gonna call it imperialistic to export freedom? Really? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're... <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean... So well, that's what we ought to be trying to do. Mm -hmm. Now, to be honest, I don't think the Republican Party is all that good on this issue as well. Mm -hmm. Why? Some in the Republican Party are governed by the Chamber of Commerce. And what does the Chamber of Commerce want? They want cheap labor. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Keep that border open. Mm -hmm. So it's both parties causing, a trouble, causing trouble here. Now, mm -hmm. at least Trump has said he would close the border. And I think as it stands right now, the number one issue in the campaign has now become border security. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll see we'll see how that pans out. Yeah. But I would love to give people the opportunities that we have here in America mm -hmm. all around the world. But practically, it's impossible to do so. Yeah. I've also noticed this. Have there been any caravans going from America to Venezuela? <laughs> no, there haven't been. Why? Because the left, which continually runs down this country. Yeah doesn't seem to realize that this is the country everyone wants to come to. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because of our system. Yep, yep. Now, I'm going to steel man this a bit because mm -hmm. I have these conversations with my liberal friends. Mm -hmm. And they would say, I just watched a video yesterday about this, and they would say, hey, the reason why these countries, are a lot of them are in disarray mm -hmm. is because of American involvement when we were trying to fight communism, propping up... Uh, non anti communist governments such as such as in uh El Salvador mm -hmm. we propped up uh, a government that mm -hmm. was a, basically an extremist right mm -hmm. terrorist group mm -hmm. and then that led to the rise of MS13 mm. and that led to some of these things 
happening, right? So therefore, let MS-13 come into the country. Right. The logic that, that doesn't the, fit. It yeah, may yeah, be yeah. true what they yeah, said yeah, to that yeah, point. Yeah, but yeah. So well, the would, logic. I'm not saying yeah. the logic is consistent. Yeah. I'm saying when I say when I make that point, mm -hmm. hey, why do you think everybody wants to come here? Mm -hmm. Right. And they go, well, of course everybody wants to come here, but that's at the expense of us meddling in so many other countries and meddling in so many elections over the decades. I'm not saying recently. I'm talking 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. So, so would they agree then if we hadn't meddled in those countries, mm -hmm. then those people wouldn't have a right to come here? Probably. I, w I would think so. They I would th say that? I think so. I, I, well, again, the folks on the left, are, there's yeah. a spectrum there. Uh -huh, right? uh -huh, so uh -huh. I would say my liberal friends would probably acknowledge and say, yeah, they don't, they don't have a right to come here, but we can't ignore why they're trying to flee these places. Mm. And in their world, oppressor oppressed mm, mm. Marx, you know, Marxist yeah, sure. influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. America has oppressed and or meddled and or, mm -hmm. uh, 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 I mean, a lot of times, I think there's been times where we've full on been a part of assassinations, you know, yeah, we've probably, taken out yeah, sure, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, 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 the, in, the, in the name of the right party, and then that party ends up being more dangerous and uh, disorderly to the to the to those countries. That may be true, but it doesn't follow, therefore, then that the people in that country therefore have the right to come here, yeah, uh, illegally. Sure. sure, you know, agreed. We we should have a legal immigration. Mm -hmm. That's why you're here, right? That's why my ancestors are here, yep. right? Yep. So yeah, we should have that. The question is how much, yeah, and and how do you process that? How do you process that? Yeah, that's the tough part. Right, that's the tough part. Yeah, it's it's. it's but we don't tough. need new laws because they're not currently obeying. The existing, the existing laws. laws. I mean, yeah. enforcing the existing yeah. laws. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'll be honest with you. Outside of that point, uh -huh. which which I think is a fair point, and I, and I, again, I, I can send you. So I just watched the documentary last night about us meddling in El Salvador and, mm -hmm. and, and how mm -hmm. kind of made the situation worse, and how mm -hmm. we more or less acknowledged that we were a part of propping up certain mm -hmm. certain groups, militia groups. This is this has happened in in the 80s uh, when we were fighting communism. This is this happened quite a bit. I, I, I the, but but remove that, which okay, let's just say were complicit and or America was even the reason why some of these places went left. That's still, to your point, that still doesn't justify mm -hmm. the pot. And, and so I'm really perplexed on, that's why I, I, you're smarter than me. I'm like, steel man this for me because I, I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, um, I heard uh, Tucker Carlson give a talk once. And again, don't be simplistic just because I bring up Tucker Carlson that I agree with everything Tucker Carlson says. Sure. You know, funny, people, people funny do you got to give the caveats. Yeah, every time I know, you, you know, but that. I do generally agree with him on many issues. And he was talking about the fact that how do people think this is going to work out for them? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, why would the left want all these people in the country uh, if say there are terrorists coming over the border mm -hmm. or there are there's all these drugs coming over the border mm -hmm. or these people are being trafficked or mm -hmm. you know all these things that are going to negatively affect them and maybe destroy the country mm -hmm. and tucker was saying they haven't thought it through mm. they just think it's a right or or or, or they want a global world government mm -hmm. not understanding that if this were to really happen it would destroy the golden goose which is america i heard a recent point uh vivek on Andrew Schultz was it Andrew Schultz. I think they were talking, and and he said that the the idea of the elites in in the in the globalist perspective mm -hmm. to say, hey, we're gonna do away with private property rights. We're gonna <laughs> do away. Uh, we're gonna go into all this climate stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, you're not gonna be able to own a gas powered vehicle. Mm -hmm. Right. All, all this sort of stuff. Which, by the way, I, I I have a Tesla. I love my Tesla. Right. Um, but it's more pragmatic reasons. Yeah. But, uh, Teslas are great cars. Um, yeah. Uh, the reason why is because they already own a bunch of property. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They're not going to be affected. Uh -huh. The elites uh, are going to still be in, in a yeah. cushy position. Right. And so they, yeah, they're having yeah. these re th these meetings in uh -huh. the World Economic Forum right, and these right. things at Davos. And, also, and, and, and it's, 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 this is what happens when you don't have God. Right. Is then you have, you create a God. Climate, That's right. Climate justice. That's right. Becomes your god. Yeah, Which what does that even mean? Oh, it just means we're going to lower our uh, footprint. It's like America only generates like fifteen or twenty percent of the global car, car, uh, mm -hmm, carbon emissions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's China and developing countries right. that are using dirty fuel. And until you pull them out of poverty, guess what? They're not going to be like we're going to electric vehicles and solar, right? So it, these people are they have a des they actually, it's actually a good desire. But it's just one that's, that removes God from it, and, re and and so now you have a replacement for religion. Yeah, Chesterton said that, I think it was Chesterton who said that when people don't believe in God, hmm. it's not that they believe in nothing, it's that they believe in anything. Hmm. So they, they have to put an idol in its place, mm -hmm. 
And even Adam Schiff in his commercial out here for the Senate in California talks about, I'm doing this for the planet, mm, mm. as if the planet is his God, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. You've got to replace, you've got to put some other thing to worship in your top priority yeah. bucket there yeah. yep, yep, yep. Uh, if you don't have God. Yep. And, and that's part of the problem. And what what's so often missed, and you just pointed it out, that th this is a system that one thing you do here affects several other things. And mm -hmm. if you don't think it through, it can be counterproductive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I Years ago, I was over in Switzerland because I have a cousin over there and I was speaking over there and he works for the UN. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, we're driving in the car, and he looked at me, he goes, what do you think about climate change, Frank? And I said, well, uh, if it is man-made, and that, that's still a question, but mm -hmm. let's assume it is, mm -hmm. that climate change is man-made. Because, you know, climate's been changing long before human beings right. existed right. on the earth, right? right? And, and what you're saying is climate change is real. Mm -hmm. We're just saying how much is man yeah. influencing but it. but even if yeah. it is man-made, yeah. let's yeah. assume it is. Sure. So I turned to him, I said, well, Hanu, actually, um, actually, I said what you just said, mm -hmm. if the United States cut its emissions to zero, mm -hmm. it wouldn't affect global temperatures at all because India and China mm -hmm. are putting out so much more carbon than we are. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he goes, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. And the, the point isn't we need to reduce global temperatures, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. The bigger point is how can we bring more people out of poverty? That's right. That's more important because you're going to kill more people That's right. by going to electric vehicles if you tried to impose that and you tried to shut down all sure. industry in these sure. countries sure. by doing that to bring global temperatures yep. down yep. than you would yep. uh, if you just kept global, if you kept the production as it is. Those people are going to come out of poverty. They're going to live better. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a system that people don't seem to make the connection. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. That, that, that whole conversation is, is is fascinating when you when you mm -hmm. get into the realities of. In other words, you say details. at what cost? Yes. We want to bring global temperatures down a degree. At yeah. what cost? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Five hundred million people dead. Well, is well, that is that the cost? I was at Jordan Peterson's um, art conference, and they had this exact conversation. And there was a lady there. I can't remember her name, but she was from Senegal, uh, mm -hmm. from from Senegal, Africa, and she said, "You guys could talk about all this stuff that you want to, but like." We're sitting on twelve trillion dollars in oil and natural gas resources, mm -hmm. and if we don't do something, there's a projected. I think she said thirty million women that were going to die, or something like an astronomical number. That meaning that if they don't develop the resources they have, it's actually going to cost them life now. Mm, like right. it's going to cost something yeah. now. Yeah. She said, "You guys stay out of it. Like we're going to extract yeah. the resources we need to pull the, these different pockets out of poverty, right? Because I don't want to say." Africa's in poverty because that's not true. But there are different pockets that need to utilize these resources and they need less global bureaucratic oversight. They need to uh, use these resources to build up their economies and pull people out of poverty. And and I think my prediction, I think what's going to happen is hopefully, God willing, we see that happen. And then you could you could alleviate this with technology and breakthroughs in technology, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's going to take some time. The tech to get the, to get the tech and then to get the tech to... India and China is going to take some time. Yeah, right now the cure is worse than the disease. That's right. That's the problem. That's right. That's right. And people don't want to acknowledge that. You always have to ask at what cost. That's right. That's right. right. I mean, I, I would I would prefer there were no emissions on anything, mm -hmm. but at what cost? At what cost? <laughs> right? That's right. And that was that was exactly her yeah. point. That was exactly. I'll send you the video. So it's it's fascinating. Um, okay. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to our Patreon exclusive segment, and I gotta I gotta ask Frank a couple more questions. We gotta talk about the LG TV issue um in terms of the lack of, of human flourishing that it leads to it's a little too spicy for youtube um i want to talk about no fault divorce laws sure. as well um and and connect that so if you're not on patreon meet us over at patreon all right i'll see you over there okay so hey if you want to see the extended version of this podcast completely unedited consider partnering with us in our online community for as little as five dollars a month in exchange you get access to these podcasts as we stream them live before anyone else gets to see them, you get access to the replay of our daily after party streams, access to our private Discord server, access to discount codes, and so much more. So help us continue conceptualizing the gospel through media, podcasting, and YouTube, and partner with us for as little as $5 a month. Also, be sure to follow us on the Spotify podcast app, on Facebook, and on Instagram, we're constantly posting content there that I think you'll find extremely valuable. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.